I believe my designs really, it's made up of two different categories, I would call them. One is romantic, which you can obviously see here, and the other one is, is brutalist. So I think it's an interesting mix of something very brutalist and something very romantic, but always trying to push to make things feel fresh and to feel reinvented and to feel of the 21st century, and I really push to do that. My must-do is to get my lighting designer involved in the project because for me the number one thing is having an amazing lighting designer. I think they can make or break a project. And then I think beyond that, my number one thing is to really to start with the materials and to really understand what I want to do with those. So most projects normally start with a piece of stone that I really love or a piece of bronze or some sort of material and then we build the whole project off of that before we get into the logistics logistics of it. You know, I'm the kind of person who, the kind of designer who likes a lot more information. So for me, I tend to not avoid things. I tend to really take the route of the more I can get from the client, the more I can learn about the brand's heritage or depending on what I'm working on, I like having as much information so I can sort of study the background of the project before I go into it. I like to let that dictate what the aesthetic will be and I find that that creates a much more thoughtful and you know educated project. I would like to see it that way. I think that's a great way to be, although I'm not sure that it is always so quiet. But I strive for it to be quietly elegant. There are times when it's appropriate for a project to be less quiet than others, but when it comes to my own personal taste and the way I would want to live, I would describe that as quietly elegant. You know, shipping things overnight from across the world or asking for, you know, stone walls that are 16 feet high and very specific things in very short time frames from around the world. And I mean, for me to give you one example of something that felt outrageous or extravagant would be very difficult to do because it's, there's always something. Um, a lot of assets. <laughs> the headache will never go away. I think what you need to do is to learn how to function within the headache because when you work through one headache, there is another one just waiting for you. And that's really what I'm in the business of doing is really navigating headaches <laughs> and figuring out the best way to manage them. So I think it's to know that they're not going to get a, go away. They're only going to get worse and to be prepared for them and to learn how to navigate them. My style's always been really the same, and I think when you, I hit the decade mark for designing and I started very young, and you know, you go, you see trends come and go, and you see sort of the design world lean towards something else, and whenever that sort of happens, I always wonder, should I lean with it, you know, and someone once told me to always stay true to my design vision, and as I branch out into bigger projects and into product and stuff like that, it's always at the back of my head, do I want to design product that's more of the time or do I want to design product that's true to what my aesthetic has been for the past 10 years? And someone, you know, very wise who I looked to for advice told me to stay true to what it is you're doing and to just look at yourself and not look at anybody else around you. It's a little cliche, but I think it's really important for an industry like this because there's so much going around. So it's really easy to see something else that's popular at the moment and, and go with that direction. Well, my favorite restaurant is called Fred's. 
and it's in Barney's, New York. So that's my number one favorite restaurant. And I love Morea on Central Park West, which is another one of my favorite restaurants. And I'd say my third favorite restaurant is La Bernadette. One, I would say, is Flair in New York in Soho. They also have a location in Italy, but I just love what they do. They, they focus in Italian design from the 1970s, and I just think it's, it's super chic, and I absolutely love it. And there's another store in Paris. It's a townhouse. It's called Francois Denac, and I've been working with him for years, and he just has the most incredible, interesting, one-of-a-kind pieces.